The Life Talk Show is about testimonies, where you can listen to be inspired, encouraged, uplifted, and entertained. It's the life. Hey, thank you for tuning in to the Life Talk Show. I am your host, Ashley Cotton, where we talk about testimonies, where we talk about our journey, our relationship through Jesus Christ. And so with me today, I have a guest by the name of Miss Shadua. Uh, actually, this is a divine connection that we share because we have known each other for, you know, maybe a couple of months, a few months. And so Miss Shadua is the seventh child in a Christian family of nine children and a postgraduate of modern Europe. European languages, majoring in French. Ms. Shadua authored a book, You Shall Cross Over This Jordan, which the Lord had her to write and was going through a storm in her life at the time of her writing this book. She is also a mentor, a life coach, and inspirational speaker, and an ordained minister of the gospel, and she hosts her own talk show as well. Please welcome Ms. Shadua to the Life Talk Show. Welcome to the Life Talk Show, Ms. Shadua. I am so excited to have you here because I've been knowing you for quite some time and our connection is definitely a divine connection, you know? And so, um, as you know, we speak about testimonies. Mm -hmm. You know, I have people to come on and share with us about their journey with Christ Jesus. And so I want you to tell us who you are and where your journey began. Thank you very much, Ashley. I'm so excited that I'm here today and uh, Yes, you're very correct. Our meeting was divinely uh, connect. It, it was a divine connection, and uh, I've been knowing the Lord for a while. Or oh God, well, God has known me all my life, even before He conceived me in my mother's womb. But um, my journey with the Lord has been amazing, and I believe part of it is because I had a very amazing relationship with my father mm -hmm. so i kind of like brought that same relationship or mindset in my relationship with god where because yes he is god but when you look at him as god he seems so far away so i like to call him father i like to call him papa i like to call him daddy mm -hmm. so that way it's very personal for me so because i had a very good relationship with my father where i could tell him how i felt if I was upset, if I was excited, you know, I didn't hide anything because I felt very comfortable in my father's love. Mm -hmm. So I was able to transfer that kind of relationship with my thing with God. So it has been a very smooth relationship. And I mean, I, I, it's not, I'm not trying to say that everything has been amazing because there were times, you know, where you want something, daddy says no, because daddy sees farther than you do as a child. Mm -hmm. Or daddy will say, wait. And then because you don't understand in your little mind as a child, you're thinking daddy's trying to keep the best from you. So there were times in my journey with God where I felt, why can't I have it now? Mm -hmm. You know, I get mad at him, but then I let him know that no matter how bad, no matter how mad I get at you, you will always be daddy. Yes. You will always be daddy because I know that you love me. And my relationship with you is not based on what you give me. I need it, but whether I get it or not, you know, you will always be daddy. So. Exactly, so it's not based on conditions mm -mm, because his not. love for us is unconditional and he wants us to also uh, love him with, you know, uh, no boundaries, no restraints, or even with conditions to say, if you do X, Y, and Z, then, okay, I'll worship you today. Exactly. And so one thing that I want to highlight, because I call him father, you mm -hmm. know, and I knew my father and, you know, um, my father passed away back in 2018, but my father was, you know, a hard dad, like, he taught me and my sisters a lot of, well, one sister, he taught us, um, you know, lessons, you know, very street smart, you know, how to carry yourself, how to be. And sometimes it could come off a little rough. Um, so what do you say to the person that's watching that may say, well, I don't view him as daddy. I don't view him as father because my relationship with my biological dad was not the best or I don't even know him. So what do you say to that person that's missing that piece to look at him as an Abba father, a loving, caring dad? Okay. 
Now, this is very important because even though I said I had an amazing relationship with my father, that does not mean that I was spoiled because you said your father was strict. Yeah. I don't think your father was as strict as my father. It was to the point where, you know, you know, sound of music. That's almost how my house was. You know, with my father, you got to cross your T's and dot your I's. So that was the kind of environment we grew up in. But if you saw, if you saw um, beyond that strictness, you could see the love that he had a certain expectation. Mm -hmm. He had a name to protect, which was what he always told us. He said, a good name is always better than money. Money is good. So he felt that he, there was a certain expectation he was expecting from us. So because of that, he raised the bar. Now let's bring it back to God. For somebody who didn't have the kind of amazing relationship that I am blessed to have had with my father. Now you said your father passed away in 2018. Mm -hmm. Uh, my father passed away in 2011, but it still feels like yesterday. Mm -hmm. So now for somebody who didn't have, who wasn't blessed enough to have a father, you know, like you and I did. Now, the difference is that our biological fathers are a father, but God is the father. Mm -hmm. So which means he is above everything body right. so what you miss in this one if you will get to know him because when you don't understand somebody when you don't know somebody you wouldn't understand why he does what he does as much as God loves us God is very strict because again there is a certain expectation if you call yourself a child of God God is a God of principles and if you don't understand that you will think he's mean Mm -hmm. But when you understand that the, because the Bible says that to whom much is given, much is required. He said when God chastens you, or when God disciplines you, it is because he loves you. Right. So in order to understand the love of God, you have to know the character of God. So how would you know the character of God? You have to read the Bible. Because if you don't have a relationship with me, mm -hmm. you will never know me. Mm -hmm. You can never say this is who Chidua is. If I didn't have a relationship with you, Ash, I can never say this is who she is. Right. Now, somebody else may say certain things about you. I don't know. I get confused or I may believe it. But if I have that relationship with you, I can say, no, that is not the Ashley I know. So for somebody who had a rough relationship with a biological father and then they are getting into a relationship with God and thinking, how can I trust him? If I couldn't trust my biological father, my father was never there for me. How can I trust that this God would be there for me as a father? My advice to them would be read the Bible, get to know him because the Bible is God. When you read the Bible, you will get to know God because the closer you get to somebody, the more intimate, that is the essence of a relationship. Mm -hmm. Now I have a relationship with you. I know you. It's something like a three court relationship. Like, you know, you have the outer court, the inner court, and then the the, the, um, the Holy of Holies, you know, like in the Bible. So those are the outer court have a certain level of knowledge, mm -hmm. but not as those in the inner court because they are closer. Now there's someone that is in the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. So that person, because of proximity, they know more than the person at the outer court. The one at the outer court will know more than the person outside the gate. So what I'm trying to say is the more, the closer, the just getting saved is not enough, but that is a step in the right direction. Now you, it's like you've taken a step close. You get to know God because then you find out that you ask for something, you get it. Now that is the attraction. That is what draws you closer to him. The closer you get to God, the more you start feeling his love. And then the more you start getting to know him. And that is what's going to help you start dropping your defenses and all the walls you've built around yourself, you know, that made you think, he can love me. I can trust him because my biological father. So the first step, like I said, is getting to know him, studying the Bible. Because if you don't know, if you don't get close to somebody, you would never get to know them. And on that note, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more. Hey, it's your girl Ashley and if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on social media. Be sure to share, like, tag and follow.
Welcome back. And so, Miss Shadua, uh, I want to turn the tables a little bit to focus on you and your journey and what that's been like. So tell us a point where, you know, with, with the way things are set up now within the world due to COVID-19 and, you know, a lot of death around us, um, what was some of the most challenging times where I know that you spoke about, you know, uh, there's been a time when you've asked, you know, the father for something and he told you no because it was for your good or maybe not right now. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with that? How do you deal with, you know, questions that you may have when you speak to your father in prayer time and you say, you know, why was this, this and that? Like what happened? Like I thought that maybe, you know, I didn't miss the mark at some point in time. Okay, so um, if I would go back to one experience that really shook my foundation, but also shaped. So it's like a, a two-way. Mm -hmm. It shook my foundation, but it also shaped my belief. Now, after I lost my father in 2011, it's like everything that could go wrong <laughs> went wrong. It's like the more I prayed the tougher things got. And I began to ask, how did, did have I missed it? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Mm -hmm. It's like, are you there? Can you hear me? Hello? <laughs> are you still there? And I got to a point where I was no longer praying for, you know, what I wanted to happen. All I was now asking him was, just tell me you've heard me. You know, it's like somebody calling my name, Chidua, 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 or, you know, and then I'm not even looking. So the, the question would be, did you even hear me? Mm -hmm. Are you aware that I'm calling your name? Mm -hmm. So I, I wasn't even praying for, you know, what I needed. My prayer now was just tell me you've heard me. Right. And I'm like, what's going on here? Like, okay, just let me know. Okay, am I even in the right path? Mm -hmm. I couldn't get any answer. I'm talking about a father you would talk to. And then maybe before you're done talking, he's responded. Now, one, two, three, four days, one week, two weeks, three weeks, you haven't heard a word. I'm like, hey, did I miss it? Tell me what's going on here. Mm -hmm. So it got to a point where, you know, now I'm thinking, okay, should I go left? Should I go right? Okay, okay, should I just stop? Just tell me because I want to know if I'm in the right direction. Oh, yeah, we've all been there I'm not getting anything. Mm -hmm. But it, I didn't know it was all. That's why I said it shook my foundation, but it also shaped my life. So I got to a point where, I'm like, okay, I can't even move. I don't know if I'm supposed to be still, if I'm supposed to move. I don't want to make the wrong, you know, decision. But how can I know what I'm doing when you're not even speaking to me? So I remember one day I was in my closet and there was something about my closet. It doesn't, it's not even about the length of the prayer, but there's something about, I was in my, I can speak about two definite situations where I prayed a prayer in my closet and I heard God and it was like a turning point in my life. So this time around, I went to the closet and all I did was I started worshiping. I started worshiping. And then the next thing I heard, I heard him clearly. If I've ever heard God before, it was that day. I mean, I've heard him, but that particular one, I wasn't even praying, I was just worshiping. And I heard him clearly you shall cross over this Jordan. I stopped and I said, I shall cross over this Jordan because I understood what he was talking about. Because like, you know, everything was so, over, it was so overwhelming, mm -hmm. you know, just, and it was just too much. But when he said, you shall cross over this Jordan, I stopped, I looked around. I'm like, okay, I know there's nobody here with me, but it was real, it was clear. And I repeated the question, I shall cross over this Jordan he said, yes. And I said, then give me the grace. But he felt like a huge burden was lifted off of me. So that was the turning point in my life. And I knew that it was a journey I had to take. It wasn't easy, but that particular day, I knew that I was in his will. And you know what's interesting that I really want to highlight is mm. that it's something about worship. Because you've been praying, you've been asking, you've been knocking, you've been seeking like the word says to do, and you should do those things. But it's something about our worship that when we remove ourselves from the problem and we're looking at the problem and we want to hurry up answer 
And when we just take some time just to say, you know what, I surrender, I'm going to just praise you, I'm going to just sing these songs to you and not even think about it, that he just came in the midst and just dropped the answer that yes. you were looking for. Absolutely. And what was that Jordan that you had to cross? It was everything I had to go through because I was, you know, like, I was doing very well. I had an amazing job. Everything was going in the direction I wanted it. But suddenly, like I said, it's like the bottom caved in and everything that could go wrong went wrong. I lost almost everything. So was it I didn't, your testing period? Yes, it was. That's why, yes, that's why I said it was, it, it, that's why I said my very foundation was shaking. But it was also the shaping of my life because that was a turning point in my life. I knew that for me it was a test in the sense that I got convinced that I wasn't serving, I wasn't pursuing God for material things. Because if it was, I would have quit at that time. But it was one thing that never came to my mind. That was actually the day I resolved that I'm going to worship this God to the end. Because there was a peace that came over me when I heard those words, you shall cross over this journey. And mark you, before this incident, I've heard, I've received so many testimony, so many prophecies about me writing a book. But you know, I never, it was like, okay, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. I never put a time to it because he didn't put a time to it either. Yeah. Whenever I go to an event, even if I'm at the back, somehow they'll find me and say, they talk about books, books, books. There's so many books inside of you. So when I heard those words, you should cross over this journey. And then I continued with my worship. And then I came out and as soon as I passed my computer desk, I heard you shall cross over this journey again. And then I looked in the direction of my computer desk and then it dawned on me that I was supposed to write. Mm. The second day I was passing by my computer desk again. I heard you shall cross over this Jordan. Mm -hmm. The third day you shall cross over this Jordan. I said, I get it. I get it. I'm supposed to write. So I sit down and I'm writing. Now the words are flowing. I, I thought, you know, I had written to a certain level. I sat back and I read it. I said, this is not me. I, where is this knowledge coming from? I, you know, I'm like, I, I'm honestly, every day I'm in awe of God because if we will allow ourselves, the Holy Spirit will flow through us. It's amazing what God can do through you and I. Because when I was looking at reading those words and I'm like, this is not me. Where did I get this knowledge from? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I couldn't, where am I getting this information from? Mm -hmm. I call this aunt of mine, an amazing woman that God used to, you know, help me through the whole thing morally financially in every sense of the word i call her up i say hey and this is what's going on and i said i'm writing an article let me read it out to you because i was amazed at the words i'm reading it out to her she paused and then she said chidua i said yes auntie it's not an article it's a book boom it hit me like a lightning bolt mm -hmm. i said you're right mm -hmm. and i wrote that book in six weeks so I've mentioned before about, you know, being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned allowing the Holy Spirit to just flow in you. And then everything would just begin to gel. How do you begin to allow the Holy Spirit to flow in you? Like, what is the remedy for that, if there is one? Yes, there is a remedy for that. And the, my advice is do not try to be in control. Surrender. It's like an eagle, the only way I can explain it, when an eagle is flying, or you may, if you've never seen an eagle, of course I've never seen one except what we see on TV, <laughs> but go study about, go study the life of an eagle. When an eagle or any bird is flying, what do they do? They flap their wings mm -hmm. because that's how they maintain their altitude. Mm -hmm. But when the storm comes, the eagle does not run away from the storm. It gets into the storm. And when it gets into the storm, it surrenders. So what is meant to destroy is not what is building the eagle. Because when the eagle gets into the storm, it stops struggling. It no longer flaps its wing to fly. Mm -hmm. It lets go. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? The storm is what's now taking it. So as a believer, let go. Mm -hmm. Don't try to control things. When the storm of life comes, just let go and let the Holy Spirit take the ride because he knows the destination. He will carry you. You don't have to wait, go on your own strength because your strength cannot take you. 
Amen. And on that note, we're going to take another break and then I'm actually going to come back to ask what was her result when she finally surrendered and let go and wrote the book. We'll be back. My name is Ashley Cotton, the host for the Life Talk Show, and I'm also a Transformation Life Coach. Here's what I can offer. One-on-one -on -one coaching, laser calls to check in, and also virtual or in-person meetings. Please, you can find me on Yelp, Google, and also on social media platforms. Welcome back to the Live Talk Show. We are still here with Ms. Shadua. And so before we went on break, I wanted to ask the question. Um, once you surrendered mm -hmm. and you know you wrote your book, what came as a result of that? You know, um, after I surrendered, things, it wasn't like things just started uh, getting better. Because you know, one thing about God, God doesn't start something he has not already finished. Mm -hmm. When he, when you go through, when you're going through a situation, there is enough grace. But the thing is, like you said earlier, when we focus on the problem, you don't feel the impact of the grace. So when I realized that it wasn't about what I was doing wrong, it was just a journey that I needed to take in order to be where God wanted me to be spiritually. So I surrendered and in that surrender was just like an eagle will surrender in that storm and the storm will carry it. Mm -hmm. I didn't even feel because each day it was like, when is this going to end? When is this going to end? I look back one day and I said, I've been in this situation for seven years. I didn't even know this because it's like I was no longer counting. The grace was there now, which is like the, the wind of the storm that carries the eagle. And, um, you know, God put people in the path that you know my needs were met uh, the other day i was talking to my aunt like can you believe that i went through this situation for seven years my bills were paid how i don't know and then people well uh, let me not say i don't know because it was god supernaturally but what i mean i don't know is that you know sometimes you're like how did this happen mm -hmm. you know you're getting into a situation and then you're thinking oh my god my rent is doing uh, maybe 48 hours and then you look at what you have it's not even anywhere close but then you realize oh it's the fifth Mm -hmm. And the rent is paid, mm -hmm. you know, so every step, my needs were met. Now, there is a difference between what you want and what you need. But when you are in that, in God's training ground, your needs will be met. Yes. Your needs will be met. And what it, it became a point in my life where I needed to trust God for everything. The greatest thing that came out of it was that I could hear God like never before in my life. I remember one day I told him, I said, Lord, I love who I have, I have become. And I said, Father, that does not mean I like, wait. <laughs> you know, that's how I talk to you. I'm like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I like what brought me here. I said, I love who I became, not how I became who I became. Mm -hmm. Because that's how I talk to him. I'm like, please don't misunderstand me. I love who I am now, but not what brought me here. Mm -hmm. So, and there was a song, every time I say it, people laugh, you know, there is this song that says, break me, mold me. And, and I said, mm -mm, the break me part, I'm not singing it. <laughs> I said, because I skip it because I said, I didn't ask him to break me. He broke me. So if I now ask him to break me, how is he going to be? So I tell people, you can go when you're done singing the break me, let me know. So I can join you to finish the song. So people <laughs> will laugh. You know what, that's funny because my song for a long time that I would not sing and I did not want to listen to is Shekinah Glory, Yes. And it's a long song, it's an extended song, and it's like my soul says yes, yes, if you need me, you know. And I just wouldn't listen to it. I'd be like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> and I would, if it come on Pandora, not, this is back then. Now I can, I can really yes. surrender to it and listen because of my journey and everything. Right. But before when it would come on Pandora and I would hear her talking, like, if you're going to tell the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. That was me. Change my heart. Oh Lord. Make it ever true. Yeah. I, you are the porter. I am the clay. Mold me and break me. I'm saying, mm-mm. Mold me. 
then I'll skip the break me. And then because I said, the one you broke, I'm not recovered from the breaking you have broken. So why would I say break me again? You know, so it was funny, but then it wasn't funny. Yeah. It wasn't funny. But looking back, I'm grateful that I went through it. And much so, so much so that I look back and I say, God, you really trusted me because I remember people telling me, a lot of people that were close to me didn't even know what I was going through. Yeah. If I didn't tell you, you would never know. Yeah. To the point where I can pass someone and I call them, they look at me like, you look familiar. And then I'll say, this is Chido. <gasps> you look different. And I'm thinking, oh my God, they'll be thinking, what's, what's going on with her? She looks, and they'll be like, oh my God, what's going on with you? You look so amazing. You, you shine. And then I'll be like, is this real? Yeah. So God covered me. In, with his glory so much. It was amazing that honestly, people will look at me and say, what is your secret? And I'll tell them it's God. Yeah. So now, you know, moving, you know, like, um, let's just jump forward. I look back and I say, wow, I became patient. There is no, I mean, it was such so that, I, you know, I tell people, all that could go wrong went wrong. I went from having more than enough to like, depending on God for everything. So like Paul said, now I know how to be full and how to not be. Mm -hmm. So, but through it all, I learned to depend on his word because his word brought me through. Amen. So right now we're gonna go on to our fire rapid questions where I ask you five questions, okay? You ready? Yes, okay, yes. so they're gonna be quick answers. Okay. Number one, what is your favorite uh, Bible verse? I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Philippians 4, I hope it's 18 or 16. I'm not sure, but I know it's Philippians. Yeah, yeah. 4, 16, 18. I'm not Number sure. two, how do you get into the presence of the Lord? Through worship. Mm -hmm. Number three, who would you like to meet in the Old or New Testament of the Bible? David. <laughs> yes. Yes. And then number four, um, what do you think heaven is like? Oh my gosh, I, there is no word for me to describe it. It's indescribable, but I know it's going to be a fun place where the glory of God, because there is a scripture in Revelation where the 24 elders and the angels, they cry, holy, holy, you know, worthy. And I believe the reason is because every day they see an aspect of God's glory they've never seen before. So they fall down. So I believe it's going to be an amazing, amazing, amazing place of no sorrow, no pain, no sickness, you know, just joy, mm -hmm. indefinite, where we would just be in the presence of the Father yes. and our Savior, Jesus Christ, my best friend. I call him my best. Sometimes I just hug him. I'm like, can I just see you so I can put my arms around you? But yes, it will be an amazing place where we'll just be in his presence forever and ever and nothing can separate us ever again nothing nothing yes. last question number five given the opportunity where you're in a small quiet intimate setting and god manifests himself to you face to face what would you say to him thank you for loving me because mm -hmm. i tell him that every day thank you for loving me yes well this is where i turn you over to the audience and you can speak to them and whatever the Lord places on your heart to share. What I have to say to you today is whatever it is you're going through, give it to the Lord. He loves you. God, you have no idea your worth. If you were the only human being on earth, Jesus would still have died for you. You are not a number. You are just in the presence of God and in the eyes of Jesus Christ. You are one person. You are not a number. God didn't just bring you here into the world because he was trying to fill up space. You know, like in an airplane, they may have like three seats remaining and they're randomly choosing people. You're not a random choice. God was intentional when he brought you into this world for a specific purpose. Go to him. Ask him what your purpose is. Develop a relationship with God. Begin to see yourself in the light of God's value for you. You are loved. You are loved. You are a child of God. And if you have not, the Bible says, for as many as have received him, to them he gave the power to become 
the children of God. We are all creations of God, but we are not all children of God. The moment you make Jesus your Lord and Savior, you become a child. And as a child, you have that preferential treatment. You can go to the Father and ask the same way a child would ask. God bless you. And with that said, um, that was awesome. Thank you. I just want to extend the opportunity for you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You know, um, maybe you have questions. Maybe you are in a place where you're seeking him and you're not quite sure. Talk to him. Make it personal. Whatever is placed on your heart and your mind for you to have clarity, for you to have understanding, go to him because he's waiting with open arms. As I always say, he's not a God that's far off in a galaxy in a distant place with a bat waiting for you mm -hmm. to thump you and to hit you and to beat you down. He's actually just waiting for the invitation because he's a gentleman and he's not going to force himself on you because you have free will like we all do. And so I just want to remind you and tell you that a transformed life equals an abundant life, that there there's plenty of room and you are not just a number, but you are fearfully and wonderfully made, created in the image of your heavenly father. So uh, thank you all for joining me and I wish nothing but you know great things for you and I will see you next Saturday.